Yeah, uh, proud of our guys. Um, you know, obviously the bounce back after not playing well yesterday. Um, you know, I think it says a lot about the resiliency and the character of this group. Uh, you know, it's been a crazy year for everyone. And, you know, I think every time we haven't played the right way, we've came back and responded. And, you know, I think that speaks volume for a young group. And we've got to continue to get better, continue to be more consistent, and continue to put together 40 minutes of, you know, SIU basketball. And, you know, I think the guys are looking forward to, uh, you know, the rest of the season. Brian Scott, Dale Egyptian. Yeah, just like how do you think the team was able to start so well from three-pointer at the beginning of the game? Well, I think the ball moved better today against their zone. Um, the guys didn't hold it. Uh, you know, they had their eyes to the rim on the catches. People were moving on the weak side. The, the cuts were harder. So I think overall there's a better bounce. And, and, you know, I think the guys, you know, obviously we showed film to them this morning and, and, and some execution things that we could have done better as coaches as well. So, you know, proud of the guys, especially offensively that first half. You know, we had a lot of threes and a lot of them were wide open and we didn't make them all, but I thought we got really good shots that first half. How do you think the team was able to play so good offensively most of the game? Or defensively, I mean, sorry. Um, you know, I think the energy, uh, the ball pressure, our closeouts were better. Um, you know, uh, and, you know, yesterday we turned the ball over a lot and it generated a lot of offense for Illinois State. And, and then they got a lot of offensive rebounds. So I think we limited some of those things that we can control. And then I thought there was just greater urgency, you know, on guarding the dribble and then on getting to the shooters. Todd? You know, your man to man defense, Brian, you kind of just made them take a lot of tough shots. Did you feel like you got into them a little bit more, or you just kind of made them, I think, a little bit more try to pass against your defense? Yeah, I think our closeouts were better, our reaction on the airtime. We weren't getting beat off a skip or off a one pass to a drive where we were constantly in rotation. So I think, you know, we did a better job being connected. Um, and, and then when they shot it, you know, they're not that bad of a shooting team. Obviously, they missed some probably ones that they normally made. But I thought for the most part, they were all contested, you know. And, you know, Illinois State, they, they play with great pace on offense, and, and they shoot a lot of threes, and they shoot a lot of tough pull-ups. And, you know, yesterday they were hitting a lot of those. Some guys that normally don't make threes were making them, and they gave them a lot of energy. Um, and, and today, you know, I thought our guys stuck to the game plan and probably our um, best defensive effort for 40 minutes. What do you think the other guys get from watching Lance not come out of the game? Um, for... The guys on the bench are saying? No, I mean, your, your team. What do you think it's like for your team to see Lance Jones play all 40 minutes today? Well, I think, you know, I think he, uh, today and then uh, at, uh, when Nora and I was here the second game, you know, he had great energy to him today. Um, he had great presence to him. He's making good decisions. Uh, and that's infectious with our team. You know, he's got a lot of responsibility right now as a sophomore. And when he plays, uh, like that, you know, we need them on the court, <laughs> you know, especially when we're, we're limited right now with Marcus being out. So, um, you know, Lance has got to continue to be as consistent uh, as we need him to be. And, you know, that's the challenge down the final stretch here for him. You know, you had some stretches where you're probably not going to be happy with the, the six turnovers in five minutes, uh, but you didn't finish the game probably as well as you hoped, but you, you really had some great performances to, to, to answer their run today. Just how, how, how happy are you to, to have a winning team today? Oh, extremely happy. Extre I'm happy for the guys. You know, it's it obviously it's not fun to lose. It's not fun not to play well, especially. Um, and like I said, these guys have been through a lot. So anytime you can walk into a happy locker room and you see all the hard work, um, you know, pay off. I mean, it's great for the guys. and. You know, obviously it gives us some momentum moving forward. We still got, you know, more home games this week. It's great not to have to travel somewhere and go on the road again. It'll be the first time in two months that we get back-to-back -back home games uh, against different teams. So I think, you know, everyone's looking forward to Wednesday. You know, you, you were in the locker room for almost 45 minutes yesterday. Do you feel like, I mean, you, you worked some things out or did some, put a lot of players step up and talk? Did you feel like you got a lot out of that yesterday? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think our guys were frustrated. Um, you know, a lot of that time was just the guys in there by themselves, you know, talking. Um, you know, it's you, know, you always, you know, hear the saying, a player-led team is better than a coach-led team. And um, so the guys were talking by themselves without the coaches in there for a while. And then as a coaching staff, we came in there and discussed and talked. And, you know, with these series, you can't 
put your head down too much. You can't be too negative. You got to get right back up because, you know, the second game's coming, you know, in 18 hours or 20 hours or whatever it is. So, um, again, I thought the bounce back and the resiliency from our guys today was, was outstanding. Thank you. I think I heard somebody else beep in there. Can somebody else join us? Uh, yeah, it's me. All right, go ahead, Adam. Do you have any questions for Coach Mullins? Yeah, Coach, uh, just, you just kind of touched on it, but I'll kind of double down just one more time. Uh, you know, with, with the kind of run that this team's been on, this, this tough stretch, how nice is it to, to be back to winning and how much confidence does this give your squad looking forward? Yeah, I mean, all these kids are used to winning. Uh, they all come from winning programs, and, and they expect to win uh, during their career here, and, and we will win. So, um, you know, we're learning how to win. And, you know, the thing I always tell them is let's continue to learn how to win by winning. You know, we don't have to learn how to win by losing. Um, so we just got to continue to be more consistent. Um, you know, we get to have, you know, a, a day of practice before Missouri State. We just play them, and, you know, we're going to have to be ready for the challenge. Obviously, they're playing really well, um, and, and you know, it's another great opportunity to play at home on Wednesday. What do you maybe think was, and I hope you didn't get to ask this already, but what did you think was the most different from yesterday's game to today's game that really led your team uh, to, to get the win? Uh, I, I think defensively, focus, uh, ball pressure, our closeouts, and then offensively, uh, I think the ball moving, um, you know, not letting the ball stick, making good decisions when we got it in the middle of the zone, finding open shooters. You know, we had 10 assists in that first half, and I think that set the tone for us. Last one for me. How much, does, in a weird roundabout way, does, does learning to win without Marcus help you guys when he does come back? Well, I, I think it's you know it's important for all these guys to learn. You know, they they've won at high school uh, level, at a high level. A lot of them state championships. Um, but in terms of the Valley, you know, a top ten conference in the country, you know, it, it's a little bit different type of commitment. It's a little bit different. Uh, type of consistency that you have to have possession by possession and you know for all these guys to get maybe more experience than they would normally get with uh, without Marcus just because Marcus plays a lot you know it's valuable for the future of the program for sure.